The most dramatic preliminary final in 20 years. GWS through to their first ever grand final, breaking Collingwood's hearts and setting up a date with Richmond. But will they have their captain to tackle Tom Lynch? This is the final so far presented by KO and Kane Corns. What a game today at the MCG. Stoppage after stoppage in the last quarter. The Giants hold on for a famous win. Oh, look at the finish here. It was just, it was an amazing last quarter. You thought it was all but done. Jeremy Cameron's lining up early in the last quarter to kick his fourth. Would have been game over. And the Giants were just able to absorb inside 50 after inside 50. 21 of those in the last quarter. Same last week, over 20 inside 50s last quarter. They hung on. Their defence was unbelievable. And here's the scenes as the Giants go through to their first grand final. Leon Cameron would have been nervous, but it's such an amazing effort from a side that's been under the pump all year. They've won three really hard-fought finals. Western Bulldogs, Brisbane last week, and now this. And great to see Toby Green with the week he's had, the relief that he'd be feeling tonight. All week, uh, the pressure's been on. They lost Lockie Whitford on Wednesday. As you said, Toby Green didn't play. This last quarter had absolutely everything. 31 points the Giants were up in the last quarter. Then this happened. Josh Thomas with a pretty dubious one that uh, we are going to have a look at with the R. It's pretty clear cut to me. It's it's touched and, and you'd, you'd almost argue it's been touched twice. So it's lucky Keith and, uh, and it's also uh, Heath Shaw as well. I reckon both of them have touched it. Now the umpire called a goal. They should review it after every goal. They didn't and it uh, went back and then this was the next goal pretty much straight after from Chris Main. They said it was insufficient evidence to overturn well, it, but I think joke. we can all think we can see that. Yeah, that's a joke. They've, they've set up the arc. Now, the arc has worked, you'd have to say, in the final series. Up until that point, it didn't work tonight and it failed the Giants. So the Pies kept on coming. That goal from Josh Thomas, he's second in the final term, put them within six points. They were coming seven minutes on the clock. Yeah, no, they were. They were coming hard. And then for the Giants to be able to hold on and, as I said, absorb the inside 50s, there was no stoppages. There's another review. Now, that one is clearly touched, the elbow of Taylor there, and that was a behind, but another key moment which they got right. And then they were, they were able, to just as I said, just to hang on, there's another dubious free kick for deliberate there. The free kick, 6-1, to one, Collingwood's favour in the last quarter. I didn't think that was deliberate, no way. Uh, it's one of the, not even a handball, it just sort of bumbled over the boundary line, so that was a mistake. But in the end, Giants good enough to hold on. Five goals to two. Five goals to two to three behinds they kicked in the third quarter, the Giants. They only trailed by two points at half time. They blew the pies out of the park in that third term. How about some of these numbers? And it all set up by Zach Williams. Yeah, completely different to what I was expecting. At half time, I thought, well, Collingwood, fresh off the week off, they'll come out and they'll overrun Collingwood. Well, sorry, the Giants. Well, Collingwood did the complete opposite. So they had 10 in inside 50s in the third quarter for five goals, too. They were so efficient. Collingwood just could not score. And then there was just some great finishes. That one from Williams, who was unbelievable playing as an on-baller. And uh, the Giants just got hot. And there was nothing really that Collingwood could do about it. And there were some Collingwood players who probably had their worst games of the season tonight. And you look at my check, you know, Penelbury was down. He was well held by the ball. That tackle from Williams is as good as you're going to see. The desperation from the Giants was amazing. Turnover from Crisp there. And Jeremy Cameron gets on the end of this one for his third goal. So, yeah, there was some poor performances individually from Collingwood and perhaps save their... Their worst game, unfortunately, for the prelim final, the biggest stage. Brody Milicek had two touches on the night. Phil, uh, ben Reid had four touches in his first game in a while. And the Giants were doing it without Phil Davis in defence. He hurt his finger in the warm-up. His calf went in the first quarter. And then he copped a shoulder injury. Nothing went right. And it allowed Haynes and Sam Taylor to stand up. It'd be devastating if uh, Phil Davis misses this week. I mean, he's a player that's got so close before. He's led the club so well in the absence of his other captain, Callum Ward, this year. Look... He came back on, they sent him forward because they had to, sort of the only place they could hide him. I actually thought it was an incredibly courageous performance from Phil Davis. He had the issue with the shoulder there as well. Um, but then these two stood up. Uh, this guy takes five intercept marks. Taylor Haynes had 30 disposals. He's been an absolute star. Look at, look at the spoils there. And that's, you know, that's the sort of stuff that makes Danny Frawley uh, get up and about, isn't it, with the Golden Fist. It was just, just an amazing performance. And this young kid's arrived on the biggest stage. Sure hands, he's tough, he's courageous, he's composed. And as I said, five intercept marks on the night in the absence of Phil Davis, who was stuck in the forward line trying to deal with an injury. Some big moments here in the last quarter. If Phil Davis doesn't get up, who goes to Tom Lynch next week? Yeah, I'm not sure. They'll have to work that out. they got uh, Keith, uh, Lockie Keith, of course, yeah. who, who came in and played, started forward, but then went back when Phil Davis had to be shifted forward. So... 
Not sure they've got uh, an ideal matchup for him, considering Jack Revolt probably had his worst game for the year as well, so he's not going to play as poorly as that in the grand final. So they'll have some shuffling to do, but right now they're just relieved that they're through. They're going to get some players back, including Green and probably Whitfield, and hope that Phil Davis gets up. Now, the man that coined the phrase, a, long, a week is a long time in football, had a big fortnight to forget. This happened back against Geelong in the qualifying final. Loved every second of it on the siren. Not so much today, Eddie Maguire. No, nah, no, nah, it's a completely different Eddie Maguire, the president of the Collingwood Football Club. Now, it's the exact same walk a fortnight apart. Now, one as a victor and, and one as a loser. I mean, he's had some... Uh, he's had some euphoric moments as the president of the Collingwood Football Club. He's also had some, some pretty devastating ones, including last year's grand final and, and that prelim final. So um, it was such a missed opportunity for the Collingwood football side. And when you look at Collingwood, I mean, grand finals are so hard to make. They come with a kick last year, everything going right for them this year. And you look at the luck that they've had this final series. So finish fourth, get a home qualifying yep. final, win that against Geelong, who should have got the home final, have the week off. You come up against GWS, who couldn't have had any worse luck. Green is suspended for the worst suspension that I've ever seen in the history of the game. Shouldn't have been suspended. You've got Lockie Whitfield, who has appendicitis. Who would read about that? You've got Phil Davis, the skipper, going down in the first 10 minutes of the first quarter. You're playing in front of 77,000 fans at home, 70 of which are Collingwood fans. It's never going to get better for Collingwood, yet they couldn't deliver. So uh, they'll rue this missed opportunity. Euphoric scenes at the MCG today. And Mal Horsey all captured on social media. Yes, boys, what a game. My heart is still racing. We're all watching those final few moments with bated breath, including a few key Giants figures. Have a look at what John Ralph captured on the boundary line. You'll see the reactions here. Right, I'll step out of the way a bit. Yeah, you'll see the reactions of Toby Green in there, Cornelio. Dave Matthews is loving it. Brett Deledio's in there somewhere. Boys, I love this so much. Like, you can just see how much it means to the boys in that club. Um, Dill Buckley, he wasn't at the ground today, but he's a fan favourite, and he shared his reaction online as well. Uh, pretty happy with it. <laughs> it's good. It's so good to see. I love, I love seeing this, and this is why we love social media as well, because we get to see all these things that we wouldn't have. And we love seeing some famous families in the change rooms as well. Yeah, um, Bobby Hill, he had his first taste of finals and he is obviously related to Bradley Hill from Frio and he was there to soak up the win post-match. So very nice to see and as I said, everyone was enjoying that winning feeling today. Uh, someone that wasn't in the room to enjoy it though was, as you mentioned, boys, Lockie Whitfield obviously had that appendix out uh, during the week. Well, they made sure he was still part of it they FaceTimed him after the win so he could be a part of the celebrations in the rooms. Look at that grin on Toby Green's face. I love that. That's pretty cool. So good, boys. Um, but he is not the only one that we could see return next week, as you touched on. Stephen Cornelio, will he, won't he? Well, one man that wants to see Stephen Cornelio back in action is Nick Natanui. He posted this on Twitter after today's game. Surely you're ready to go, Stephen Cornelio. Now... No response from Cogs yet, but boys, does he get up? It would be awesome. Unlikely. I would yeah. think highly unlikely he does. Look, they'll give him every opportunity, um, but it's a big risk to take in a grand final. But uh, he's that good to give him every chance, but I doubt it. DeBoer Martin, last time they played on each other, Martin kept a 15 disposals, tagging fraternity, excited. Oh, he's just been unbelievable all year, Matt DeBoer. It's unfortunately he got injured, but he, since he's come back in this final series, for me he's a player of the finals and uh, I do like that side of the game clearly, but to keep Bontempelli to 13, Lockie Neal to 17 and today Scott Prendlebury, the skipper of Collingwood, to 18. I mean, who's done that in the three-week stretch? Now he takes on, you know, one of the game's probably the best player, Dustin Martin, and he'll test him, Dustin Martin, because of his ability to go forward. They might need to keep an eye on Dion Prestia. He was everywhere on Friday night as we have a look back at that game. Tom Lynch, five goals. The two Gold Coast boys waxing in attack. Yeah, just a massive blow for the Gold Coast footy club, I reckon, uh, watching this, because you see the contrast to... The Gold Coast players who, what, they win three games for the year and they're in the middle halfway through their holiday up on the Gold Coast and then you get two, one former captain and one, you know, top ten draft pick that were at your club playing in a prelim in front of 94,000 through a grand final. How are they ever going to keep their players? I don't know, but what I will say is these two were just sensational and to be fair, Presti has done it for a number of years and that's what they got Tom Lynch for. I mean, he doesn't play for Richmond, they don't win. So four contested marks, five goals won and... 
uh, he was the best man on the ground. John have a full back in, that, in Mark Blitzow's play deep in defence for 20 weeks. He played on the wing for three, uh, sorry, two of the three finals uh, and in the ruck for one of them. Were you surprised he didn't go back to play on Lynch? Kept him to one goal back in round 12. Strange, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he doesn't look like a natural match. He looks to be a bit out of his weight division. But um, when, when he was hot, why they wouldn't have put him mm. back on Tom Lynch. And it's clearly from the opening moments, Tom Lynch was the most dangerous player on the ground. He was the most damaging. So, Blixarf, he's been stubborn with him. Chris Scott clearly hasn't worked this final series and you'd have to wonder whether his stubbornness and his um, maybe there's a thing in his mind that he wants to be right and have the last laugh cost him on Friday night. We didn't have the last laugh with these comments during the week. These raise a few eyebrows on the Tigers. I think we do have a method that troubles them. Um, I'm not a big fan of looking too far back, but I don't think we were anywhere near as good a team as we were, as we are now last year. Um, and I think they were a better team last year than they are now. Bit of egg on the face for Chris Scott. Well, it is now, in hindsight. Look, when he made those comments, I could see what he was trying to do because I didn't think they were ever going to win that game when Tom Hawkins was suspended. So you had to try and disrupt them yep. a little bit and try and get under the skin. So. You make that, you, you, you make yourself, you put yourself out there. In hindsight, you look silly. And, and he, he looked a bit silly last year, I thought, when, when he made the comment about Richmond when they were flying, that a lot's going to have to go right for them to win it. Yes, they didn't win it, so it was probably justified. But to say they were better last year than this year, now that they've got Tom Lynch, probably probably in hindsight, not, not the right call. They may have some headaches at selection, the Tigers. Jack Graham hurt his shoulder early in this one and battled on manfully. Damien Hardwick said... Uh, he was so impressed with the courageous effort in this one. But they're going to have to make a call if he does miss. Sydney Stack plays the VFL Grand Final. His first game since ankle surgery five weeks ago. They've got Jack, Jack Ross waiting in the wings. Or do they hand a debut to Marlon Pickett in an AFL Grand Final? Yeah, I'm not sure which way they'll go. I mean, the, the, the Richmond fitness staff will know exactly where those three players are, the potential to come in. And they would have monitored them so closely with the amount of work that they've done. Look, with, with all due respect to Jack Graham, he's not a massive loss to them. And that's just the cold, hard facts of it. He's, he's a great, honest young player who's got a bright future. But... Him going out, they're not going to lose too much. He, what I'm saying is he is replaceable. They've got three ready made replacements to come back in. So I wouldn't play. I, I wouldn't take the risk because, it, it, you know, if it was Dustin Martin, you roll the dice and think, well, hopefully your shoulder doesn't pop out. The fact that it's, you know, probably your 21st or 22nd player, you're able to drop them and bring a fresh player who's 100% back in for a grand final. Jack Ross is like for like, but Stack is the exciting prospect. We'll see what happens in the VFL grand final. Just on their rucks, Nan Curvis and Soldo, 55 60% of game time both of them played. They even had injuries to deal with. So the rotations were down. Can they take both of those guys in against Mumford? It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is a massive uh, burden to carry, I guess, if you're playing 55 and 60%. Basically means one of them is on the bench the whole time. Yeah. The only thing with Mumford, he's done a power of work and he's almost out on his feet, I reckon. So maybe they just tag team him in the grand final, stick to the structure that they know and just really try and go after Shane Mumford, who's you know nearly on his last legs. It's going to be decision time coming at the Cats and what they do with a few players. Chris Scott had these comments to make three weeks ago about 2020. A couple of things I'm really confident in. I think we'll be a better team next year than we are this year. I think we've got improvement left in us. And I think we're really well prepared to have a good crack at it this year. Now, whether other people choose to define us by what happens over the next month is their choice. He's backing the young players in to improve, but at the top end, they've got some decisions to make on some senior guys. Gary Ablett is at the top of that list. We saw his dad in the rooms. I think we're going to know in the next couple of days on what he's going to do. But after that, there's a few guys getting on. Yeah, over the, the course of the off-season, we'll have time to dissect where Geelong are at and what sort of impact they're going to have next year. But, but on, on that, it looks like the ship's almost sailed. And when you look at the names there, Tim Kelly is gone. He was their best player on Friday night, they have a crack at Goldstein. The desperation to give a 31-year-old four years says to me how desperate they are to find a Ruckman. They don't have a Ruckman, they still don't. They miss on Sean Higgins. You know, Jack Stevens is either a replacement for Tim Kelly. I'm not sure about that uh, and, you know, what impact he'll be able to have. So, to me, it looks like Geelong won't be a better side. But you'd have to think, they've made a prelim, uh, they finished on top of the home and away ladder for a reason, and they're 20 points up at half-time against mm. the best side in the last three years. So. It's not all bad, and I think the season has been a pass for them because if you said at the start of the year Geelong will get this close and this far, you would have taken it. But right now it appears to me 
the edge and the fall could be pretty steep. All right, Kane, don't forget, you can watch KO. KO lets you instantly stream over 50 sports, including every match of this year's Toyota AFL Final Series. One to go. You can catch up on any of the matches you missed with the KO Hub with all these weekend's matches, classics and more available on demand, ready to be watched at a time that suits you. Plus, of those 50 other sports, the live coverage of every match of the Rugby World Cup this weekend. Australia holding on against Fiji. Looking forward to seeing a bit more of that unfold over the next couple of weeks. Now, to that game for next week, 2.30 start at the MCG. The Tigers up against the Giants. Can't wait. Your man, Toby Green, will be in the thick of it. Hey, we'll be, we'll be back in, ready to go, and hopefully ruffling some feathers. I'm sure maybe the AFL is looking through some vision, trying to find out how they can suspend him for oh. the grand final. But uh, he'll be there, which is good news, and hopefully he's got some mates and the Giants are fit and we, we get a cracking contest. For the 16 other teams, they would have been out at Icon Park today for the NAB League Grand Final. They saw a complete domination by Matt Rowell, this year's number one pick. Looks destined to go to the Giants. 44 touches and two goals in a Grand Final. Yeah, I think you said the Giants. I think you meant the Suns. So looks Sorry, the destined Suns. to be yep. the first pick to the Suns. And, you know, he's probably watching along the final series thinking, gee, I'd love to be out in the MCG in front of 80,000, but I'm going to be stuck on the Gold Coast. Uh, but anyway, he's a star. The numbers were extraordinary today and um, good on Gold Coast for getting him because they need all the help they can get. That's it for us this year, Kane. Thanks for the season. It's been awesome. Mitch, you've dominated. Mel, you've been a star. And uh, hopefully they'll have us back next year. Hopefully. And thanks to Jack, Haley, and all the crew. Been awesome this year. Been great fun working on the round so far. Hopefully you see you same time, same place next year.